14-year-old girl. Imagine a seemingly ordinary family torn apart by a shocking act of violence, leaving everyone to question the darkness lurking beneath the surface. On March 19, 2024, the quiet community of Brandon, Mississippi, a place that prides itself on being the second safest city in the state, was shattered by a horrifying crime. A 14-year-old girl was taken into custody, accused of shooting her own family members in a chilling case that left everyone asking, why? In this video, we'll break down the shocking details of this case and tackle the haunting question on everyone's mind. What could push a 14-year-old to commit such a devastating act against her own family? Let's dive into the story. Carly Gregg was born in April 2009 in Stewart, Florida. She was the daughter of Ashley Nicole Smiley, a devoted mother and beloved algebra teacher at Northwest Rankin High School, where Carly herself was a student. Before her time at Northwest Rankin, Ashley taught for five years at Warren Central High School, earning recognition as the new Teacher of the Year in 2022. Living in a three-bedroom, two-bath home on Ashton Way with her husband Heath Smiley and their two golden retrievers, Wyatt and Finn, Ashley was known for her passion for education and love for family trips to Disney World. She was described as an exceptional mother who cherished reading and spending quality time with her loved ones. Carly was an intelligent student who had even skipped the fourth grade. Until recently, she had no history of behavioral issues. However, troubling signs began to emerge, especially after Ashley discovered Carly had a secret boyfriend and confiscated her phone. Ashley and Heath believed these were typical teenage growing pains, unaware of the deeper struggles Carly was facing. Carly was undergoing therapy for anxiety and stress, compounded by her biological father, Kevin Gray, who struggled with drug addiction. That Carly had been suffering from a mental illness, that Carly was not aware. Reports indicated that Kevin had allowed Carly to drink beer at just 12 years old, and the custody battle over her was contentious. Ashley feared Kevin to the point of keeping a loaded firearm in the house for protection. On that fateful Tuesday afternoon, March 19th, Ashley and Carly returned home from school shortly after 4 p.m. Tensions flared once again when Ashley learned Carly had allegedly been smoking marijuana. When they arrived home, Ashley went straight to Carly's bedroom to search for evidence. Surveillance footage captured a crucial moment. Carly, holding an object behind her back, approached her mother. Just seconds after the shooting, Heath received a text from Ashley's phone asking, When will you be home, honey? After replying, Carly frantically messaged a friend to come over for help. When the friend arrived, Carly asked, Are you squeamished around dead bodies? before leading her to the bedroom where Ashley lay on the floor. Allegedly, Carly turned to her friend and said, I put three in my mom, and I have three more for my stepdad when he gets home. Carly then removed the interior camera and placed it in the refrigerator. Heath arrived home at 5.30 p.m., completely unaware of the horror that awaited him inside. As Heath stepped through the door, he sensed something was off. Carly had been acting strangely in the days leading up to this moment, quiet, withdrawn, her usual laughter replaced by an eerie silence. Heath brushed aside his concerns, attributing her behavior to typical teenage mood swings. And I came on in, and when I opened the door to the kitchen there, a uh, gun went off in my face before the door was 
I don't know, three or four inches wide open. And Heath approached Carly's bedroom door, feeling an unsettling energy that seemed to pulse through the air. With each step, a sense of foreboding gripped him. Suddenly, a loud bang shattered the tranquility, followed by the sharp crack of a gunshot. Uh, everything kind of kind of went pretty fast from there. It was a blur. In that moment, time seemed to slow down. Heath barely had time to react as he was met with the terrifying flash of a gun aimed at him. The shock paralyzed him for a split second before instinct kicked in. As the sirens wailed in the distance, the gravity of the situation sank in. A child had pulled a gun on her stepfather. This was not just a family tragedy, it was a community crisis. How could this happen in their town? The evidence was clear, a young girl was in distress, and her actions had resulted in a near-fatal confrontation. But why? What had led Carly to this point? In the days that followed, the community would be forced to confront difficult truths about mental health, family dynamics, and the hidden struggles that often go unnoticed. Carly's story would unfold in the public eye, revealing layers of complexity that many would find uncomfortable to discuss. As the dust began to settle, the horrifying reality became clear. Heath had been shot, grazed by a bullet, but that was only the beginning. The tragic events of March 19th would serve as a stark reminder that even in the most loving families, darkness can lurk beneath the surface, waiting for the right moment to emerge. The trial began with a tense atmosphere that permeated the air like a thick fog. Family members and community members gathered, their expressions a mix of anticipation and dread. Each day, the courtroom filled to capacity, an audience captivated by the tragic unfolding of events. Carly's presence was haunting. The girl who once brought joy now sat at the defendant's table, her life hanging in the balance. Heath took the stand on the first day of testimony, his demeanor a complex mix of sorrow and disbelief. He spoke candidly about his relationship with Carly, highlighting the moments of joy they shared, but also the signs he missed. I have never seen Carly angry. She was always the happy little girl, he stated, his voice trembling with emotion. The community watched intently, caught between empathy for Heath and horror at what Carly had done. Uh, The prosecution laid out a timeline of events detailing the horrific moment Carly shot Heath. Eyewitness accounts painted a grim picture, Carly, facing her stepfather with the gun in hand, terrified yet somehow detached. The prosecution argued that her actions were premeditated, a calculated choice fueled by hidden turmoil. They painted Carly not just as a troubled girl, but as a dangerous individual whose mental health struggles could not excuse her actions. The defense sought to explore Carly's mental state, suggesting that she was not entirely responsible for her actions. They painted a portrait of a girl in turmoil, struggling with deep-seated emotional pain. The defense's expert psychiatrist testified about Carly's psychological struggles, emphasizing her need for compassion rather than punishment. Carly is a victim of her own mind, the psychiatrist stated, eliciting murmurs of agreement from some in the gallery. 19th to bring about the death of Ashley Smiley and the injuries to Heath Smiley. However, this is a why case. Why did it happen? Why did this exceptional child with no history of violence? On the other side of the courtroom, Carly sat quietly, her face a mask of confusion and fear. She was not just a defendant, she was a young girl battling mental health issues that few understood. 
The defense's strategy relied on the notion that a jury would be reluctant to severely punish a 14-year-old girl grappling with mental health challenges, despite the severity of her actions. As the defense rested its case, the prosecution brought in mental health experts to counter the defense's claims. However, this is a why case. Why? One particularly striking testimony came from psychiatric nurse practitioner Olivia Liebert, who evaluated Carly shortly before the incident. Who was loved by her friends, her teachers, her parents, who had a good home life. She revealed a chilling diagnosis of adjustment disorder mixed with anxiety and major depressive disorder. Carly denied any hallucinations or abnormal thoughts, Olivia stated, casting doubt on the defense's argument. The courtroom felt the weight of Olivia's words. Carly's struggles were no longer a distant narrative. They were brought into sharp focus, revealing a young girl trapped in her mind. But as the prosecution unveiled their case, questions began to arise. That they were all three victims. How much responsibility does a person bear for their actions when their mental state is compromised? The tension in the courtroom reached a fever pitch as the prosecution introduced evidence of Carly's journals, filled with disturbing thoughts and reflections on violence. Each page turned was a glimpse into her psyche, a haunting testament to the struggles she faced. The prosecution argued that these writings indicated premeditation, showcasing a darker side that had been lurking beneath her seemingly normal exterior. The testimonies painted a complex picture of Carly, one that blurred the lines between victim and perpetrator. The jury was left grappling with a moral dilemma. Was Carly a child in desperate need of help, or a young girl who had crossed a line that could not be uncrossed? The courtroom became a battleground for opinions on mental health and accountability. Carly's defense attorney painted her as a victim of her circumstances, a girl who had been pushed to the brink. She was never given the tools to cope with her feelings, he argued, appealing to the jury's sense of compassion. Yet, as the prosecution countered with evidence of Carly's writings and her actions on that fateful day, the jury's resolve wavered. Each side presented compelling arguments, and the tension mounted as they awaited a resolution. The trial became a spectacle, drawing attention from neighboring towns and the media. It was my impression that Carly had... The final day of the trial arrived with palpable tension in the air. As the jury filed in, each member wore a solemn expression. The weight of their decision hung heavily, not just for Carly, but for an entire community grappling with the aftermath of violence. The courtroom buzzed with anticipation, spectators leaning forward in their seats, eyes fixed on the jury. Carly sat at the defendant's table, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. The room was filled with a mix of emotions, fear, hope, despair. From the indictment, beginning on the first row, ma'am, is that your verdict? Yes. Sir, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? Sir, is that your verdict? Ma'am, is that your verdict? As the jury deliberated, tension filled the air like a thick fog. They faced a harrowing choice, to find Carly guilty or to extend compassion for a young girl battling unseen demons. The moment the foreperson stood to read the verdict, silence engulfed the room. We the jury find the defendant Carly Madison Grigg guilty of first-degree murder, the foreperson declared, the words resonating like a death knell. Gasps echoed in the courtroom. Carly's face fell, tears welling in her eyes as reality set in. She was not just a victim of her circumstances, she had crossed a line from which there was no return. Heath, sitting just a few feet away, felt a mix of emotions, relief that justice was served but sorrow for the family torn apart. It's a tragedy for everyone involved, he later remarked, his voice heavy with grief. The complexities of their relationships were laid bare, the lines between love and betrayal blurred. The courtroom erupted in murmurs as the verdict sank in. Many felt a sense of closure, while others grappled with a profound sense of loss. Carly's fate was sealed, 
but the scars of that day would last a lifetime. The community wrestled with the realization that a young girl's life had been irrevocably altered, her future forever changed by a moment of desperation. The story of Carly Gregg serves as a haunting reminder of the thin line between innocence and guilt and how mental health can complicate our understanding of justice. As the community of wood begins to heal, they carry with them the scars of a tragedy that will echo for generations. Carly's journey is far from over. It is a story that challenges us to look deeper into the lives of those around us, to seek understanding, and to remember that every individual has a story worth telling.